Okay, so we've got a second session now. Um, and so Austin has travelled all the way from the States to uh, talk to us today. And he's not just going to be challenging us about creativity, but he's going to have uh, max creativity. So uh, welcome to Austin. Thank you. And you know, it's not just creativity, it's a little bit more. So then I was thinking, okay, maybe creativity plus or something like that, maybe creativity pro. And then I thought, oh, we're gonna go creativity max. <laughs> so one of Apple's branding keywords, you have to use those. So we landed on creativity max, cultivating max creativity. The purpose of today's talk is I really wanted to talk about doing something great. So not just creating something mediocre, but creating something unexpected, something out of the ordinary, something that people haven't seen before. So doing something great. And that's kind of the overarching purpose that I want you to keep in mind as we talk today. Okay, I want you to close your eyes for a second, which I know is like the worst thing I could say other than find a partner. But <laughs> close your eyes for just a second and think about the most amazing app uh, you can possibly think of. Okay, the most amazing app in the universe. As you think about this, there are literally no rules. So if you find yourself thinking, well, an iPhone can't do that, you gotta discard that thought, it doesn't matter. What is the most amazing app you can come up with? If you think, oh, that's literally impossible, discard it, doesn't matter. What would be the most incredible app in the universe? The most amazing app that exists. Think about that, literally no rules here. So discard anything that you're taking out because it's not possible. And challenge yourself to think about it farther, push it farther, what else? Okay, good, now the next thing I want you to do is write that down. So pull out your phone, pull out a notepad, anything you want, if anybody uses paper, <laughs> and write down your idea. What was your idea that you just had? It's actually gonna be really important because as I go about the talk today, I want you to write down ideas that you had for apps. So what I say up here is not very important. What's on the slides is not extremely important. The most important thing over the next 30 minutes or so will be the ideas for apps that you get. So I wanted you to make sure to write those down. And we're gonna talk more about that later too, why that's important to write it down. So write down whatever idea you just had. Be ready to write down literally any other idea that comes to you. If you think it's a bad idea, it doesn't matter. Just put it down. That is literally the most important thing you can do. Okay. Now we're gonna transition a little bit. Let me tell you a little bit about my best friend uh, who's played a really important role in my creativity. His name's Ollie. Uh, so I wanna tell you about Ollie. We've been friends since we were born, literally. Uh, so Ollie and I, okay, Ollie and I, uh, like I said, great friends since birth. In fact, we were literally born on the same exact day in the same exact year, literally in the same exact minute. When we found that out, it was like crazy. So literally the same exact minute. Uh, we spend nearly every waking minute together, uh, work on all of our projects together, all of our businesses, all of our app ideas, everything. Ollie, yeah, we work great together. He's actually here today in the back. I don't know if you saw that, but yeah, Ollie, if you wanted to stand up in the back. Okay, thanks Ollie, just wave to everybody. Cool, thank you. Uh, okay, so let me show you some pictures of Ollie and I. This is us at Yellowstone. If you've heard of Yellowstone, it's a national park we have in the States. From Texas. Uh, this is Ollie and I on, our plane, on the plane on the way here. It was a nine hour plane flight, but we obviously had a good time. Uh, as you know, Ollie is my best friend. Not only is Ollie my best friend, Ollie's actually my imaginary friend. Ollie is not only my imaginary friend, Ollie is actually my imagination friend. So Ollie plays the role of all the creativity that I get in my life. Whenever I have a good idea, it comes from Ollie. Whenever I think, oh man, I should change this line of code to be a little bit more efficient, that's, that's literally from Ollie. So every single creative idea I have in my life is from Ollie. Ollie's my creative director, and I don't have to pay him one cent in a year, ever. He's completely free, he's, he's with me all the time. And because he's an imaginary friend, Ollie is actually available to everybody here. <laughs> 
Everybody has an Ali, whether or not you know him. You might not even know his name or her name, but Ali is real, okay? Ali's an imaginary friend. That's only because everybody else has to use their imagination to see him, but he is real to you. He is your creativity, he's your muse, he's everything. So we're gonna talk about your relationship with your Ollie, with your imagination, with your creative director, your muse. What is your relationship with that person in your life? So we're gonna talk about four rules with your imagination friend. Four rules that I follow to cultivate max, to cultivate pro-creativity, with my imagination and how we work together to do that, okay? So rule number one, this is probably the most important rule. Rule number one is there are no rules. This is Steve Jobs, you might have heard of him. Uh, he invented all of our professions. <laughs> Once you discover a simple fact, and that is that everything around you that you call life, quote unquote life, was made up by people who were no smarter than you. And you can change it, you can influence it, you can build your own things that other people can use. Once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. So the most important thing from this quote is rules are completely made up. Every rule that you live by, completely made up. Somebody made it up. Look at the person on your left, look at the person on your right, look at yourself. These are the people that made up the rules. Literally, it's us. People that came before us, just because they happened to live 300 years ago, doesn't mean that they were any smarter than us. In a lot of ways, they didn't even know anything about iOS development. The things that we're doing in <laughs> iOS development right now are only set by people who started doing iOS development 10 years ago, or however long this has been around. It's literally nobody any smarter than us. Rules are completely made up. So what are some of the rules that we know as iOS developers, especially indie iOS developers? What are some of the rules that we follow, right? Rule number one, there are too many weather apps. <laughs> Who's heard that? Raise your hand. Too many weather apps. Yeah, like everybody knows that rule. Do not make a weather app. And that's not like the first rule that we always, that's the first app that we always make is a newly learning developer to make a weather app. Well, tell that to Carrot Weather. Like this app is awesome. An app with a personality, a weather app with a personality that doesn't just give you the weather, but he says abandon all you hope who venture out into this weather. Like, this is a different kind of weather app that we've never seen before. So the rule that there are too many weather apps is completely irrelevant. It, it, it doesn't matter at all. Somebody made it up. Who knows who made it up? Somebody made it up and it's not really a rule. Rules are made up. Okay, what about there are too many habit trackers? Literally everybody makes a habit tracking app. I made a habit tracking app and I, I still like it. <laughs> what about not boring habits? Not boring habits literally just won Apple Design Award winner of the year. It's awesome. This is a really sweet app made by Andy Allen. Great, it's, now it sounds like I'm like sponsored by Not Boring Habits. I'm not, I don't even know him. But really cool app, there are not too many habit trackers. So when you hear that rule, when you hear any rule about apps at all, it doesn't exist, it's not real. Somebody said it once and we all just thought, oh yeah, yeah, totally. And then we all started saying it. It's not really a rule, it just kind of became a thing. I don't know why. So that's rule number one, is there are no rules. Literally no rules, there's no one, two, three, four, there's no list of rules that we can follow anywhere, there's no rules for imagination, no rules for creativity, anything, no rules at all. Okay, rule number two. Rule number two is no editing allowed. Let me tell you about Christopher Nolan. Who's heard of Christopher Nolan? Yeah, okay, okay, good. I was like, man, I hope this is a thing. He's a British director, so, yeah, just because he happens to live in the US doesn't really Christopher Nolan done all the greatest movies, all the greats, the classics, Inception, The Dark Knight, Dunkirk, literally everything that's good is Christopher Nolan. Uh, that's my opinion. I actually was a film major, so I think that holds some weight. Christopher Nolan is awesome. Here's what Christopher Nolan said that I wanna share with you. This is rule number two, no editing allowed. He's a writer and a director, so he wears a lot of hats. I'm actually gonna go back so you don't read the quote. He wears a lot of hats. I thought of us as iOS developers, we wear way too many hats, right? We are not only developers, but we're front-end engineers, back-end engineers. I went through all of the marketing, all of the finance, all of the SEO, all of the ASO. It's like literally everything we do, tons of hats. Christopher Nolan wears two hats, well, three. He's a writer, director, and a producer. So I thought that, that might, he might be relevant towards today's discussion. So Christopher Nolan said this, as a writer, when he's writing, I try to take my director's hat off and not be afraid and just say, 
I want to write the most exciting thing, the most unexpected thing I can think of for the story. Okay, so no limits, no rules, nothing. He is thinking, what is the most exciting, the most unexpected thing for the story? That is his main concern. Then, as a director, he picks up the script for the first time, puts the director's hat back on, and he goes, okay, what am I gonna do with that? That's when you know you're in a good place because every film, you want to be challenging yourself. You wanna be doing something different. So Christopher Nolan, he's a writer, he's a director, but he is never, ever simultaneously a writer and a director, ever. He's a writer and he's a director, but he is not a writer and a director, okay? As iOS developers, we are creatives, we are developers, but we are never creatives and developers. Now, does that mean that you can't, while you're writing code, be like, oh, that's a good idea, and you're like, oh wait, do not create while I develop. Heads down, let's focus. That's not what that means. It simply means do not let your development limit your creativity. So once you get into development and you start and, and you have all these ideas that you've built up, do not say, ah, man, that was a cool idea, but that is, I don't know how to make that, so it's not gonna happen. That's when your development captured creativity. That is literally not what we want. Creatives and developers cannot coexist. <laughs> that's, that's like 80% of the time true, unless it's a good idea and you feel like, yeah, I can develop that. Okay, so story time. This is a story about a city called Gotham and a person called the Joker. <laughs> the Joker has taken over Gotham. He is causing chaos. He is knocking helicopters out of the sky. He is rampaging the streets in his semi-truck. The Joker is causing rampage everywhere and nobody can stop him. Nobody can get him out of the semi-truck. Nobody can stop the chaos that he's causing except for one person and that is Batman. But Batman is on a bike. So the Joker's in a semi-truck, Batman's on a bike. So Christopher Nolan and his creativity are sitting together. His creative, I think his name is uh, Roger, he told me. Yeah, okay, so Christopher Nolan and Roger are sitting down together, it's his imagination friend. And they're talking, okay, how can Batman take down the Joker? No, we have to think about something, something, something. His imagination finally, after minutes of thinking as hard as they possibly could, his imagination says, I've got it! We've got to flip the semi over itself. And Christopher Nolan's like, yes, that is awesome. So they've got to flip the semi over itself, but not just like a normal semi would flip over. They want to flip it over portrait mode. So like this semi is gonna, it's going down the road. They want to flip it over this way. And Christopher Nolan, he's all cheers. He's like, yes, Roger, that is a brilliant idea. I love it. Let's do it. Now, because Christopher Nolan understands rule number two, which is no editing allowed, none of these things were said during the meeting. You can't flip the semi over itself. That's too dangerous. Batman's on a bike. How is he gonna flip a semi over himself? He's on a bike. None of these things were said at all. Literally none of them. They are not allowed in this meeting. The only thing that Christopher Nolan said when his imagination said, we gotta flip a semi over it, so portrait mode, was yes, that is awesome. We've gotta do that, that would be so cool. That is the only thing that was said. So then, Christopher Nolan becomes a director. He's now finished writing, now he's a director. And he looks at the script for the first time and he sees, okay, we gotta flip the semi over, it's a portrait mode. And the question, the question then becomes, how can I now build what we have created? So he looks at this as a director and then all the questions start floating in. Ah, that's too dangerous, Batman's on a bike, he can't flip it over itself, that's literally impossible, nobody's done that before. Christopher Nolan doesn't use CGI or special effects other than vision, like literal practical effects and so he says, I don't know if we can do that, but we gotta figure it out because my imagination said we gotta do it. We already decided on that. Now we have to now figure out how to build what we've created. So this is what they came up with. the little flip from Batman on his bike after that. That's just like way too cool to not include it in here. How awesome is that? All right, let's, in fact, let's give a round of applause for that amazing creativity. Amazing creativity, amazing uh, execution. 
So Christopher Nolan understood the rule, no editing allowed. When that idea was presented, we have to flip the semi over itself by his imagination. Christopher Nolan said, yes, that is awesome. We have to do that. And later they figured it out, and that doesn't matter right in the moment. You have to figure it out later. But in the moment, the only thing that you can say is that is awesome. So if you're not being challenged, then you need to be more creative. You gotta go back to the drawing board, you gotta be more creative. If the time comes that you are developing your application and it's you know turning out to be kind of mediocre, you gotta go back to the uh, drawing board to be more creative. Don't let the development drive your feature set, let your creativity drive your feature set and, and figure out what works for your app. In the words of the brilliant, amazing philosopher Ted Lasso, don't bring an umbrella to a brainstorm. That's something that you can't write down. <laughs> so if not editing, if you're not allowed to edit, then what are you supposed to say in these meetings with your imagination? No editing allowed, so just sit there speechless. No, there is something you can say. The only thing that you're allowed to say in these meetings with your imagination are words of extreme validation. That is the only place this effect fit. <laughs> and I really wanted to use it. Extreme validation is the only thing that you are allowed to say during, with your creativity in these meetings. Now, obviously this does not work in all places of your life. If somebody's asking you for real advice, a, a person, and they say they want advice on something and they present a really bad idea, that does not necessarily mean you need to give them extreme validation. But with your creativity, it is always extreme validation. Uh, everything your imagination says is absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's something that you want to implement. So I'm gonna give you two examples so that you can kind of understand this. Uh, the imagination that you have uh, needs this extreme validation. Their, their self-perception, uh, their feeling of self-worth is extremely fragile. So we kind of have like a buildup as humans where like if people don't like our ideas, we're like kind of like, oh, whatever, you know, I'll, I'll do it anyways, it'll be fine. Your imagination is not like that. Your imagination is offended very easily and they will stop giving you ideas if you do not like what they say. So let me give you an example. Let's say that your imagination comes to you, all right? I'm the imagination in this example. Your imagination comes up to you and he says, hey, I have got this brilliant idea. You're like, yeah, what is the idea? I'm ready for it. They say, imagine this, Uber for dogs. And you're like, okay, I'm listening. This sounds stupid, but I'm listening. Okay, you're on a vacation, your dog wants a pup cup, and you gotta take him to Starbucks. You guys have Starbucks here, by the way? I didn't think about that, okay, good. Your dog wants a pup cup from Starbucks, but you're on vacation, how are you supposed to take your dog to, pup, to uh, Starbucks? Well, introducing Uber for dogs. Uber can come pick up your dog, put him in the back seat, take him to Starbucks, this is all while you're thousands of miles away, get him a pup cup, take him back home, drop off your dog, lock your doors safely, it's perfect, everybody's gonna love it, Uber for dogs, this is the next big thing. And you look at this idea and you're like, that is so stupid, that's never gonna work, my dog can't even talk to me. Uh, and when I'm on vacation, I don't care about what my dog's doing. You know, he's hanging out at home, he doesn't need a pup cup, he's fine, dumb idea, bring me when you got something good. Now, like I said, your imagination is extremely vulnerable. Even us as people, let's say we presented an idea we really believed in, and somebody treated it like that, they said that's really stupid, that's never gonna work, and they listed out all the reasons why it would never work, you're probably not gonna bring very many ideas to that person. And your imagination will never bring you another idea again. <laughs> you can, you can, mend the relationship. Um, but contrast that to this example, okay? Your imagination comes up to you. He says, hey, I've got this incredible idea. You're like, all right, I'm listening. I, in fact, do you mind if I get a piece of paper? I really want to write this down. This is going to be good, I can tell. Your imagination says, yeah, get a piece of paper because I'm going to make you a trillionaire. You're like, yeah, okay, I'm listening. Your imagination says, imagine Uber for dogs. And you're like, I already love it. Like, <laughs> this is incredible. I don't know what you're going to say next, but I love it. Uber for dogs, yes, keep talking. Your imagination says, okay, you're on vacation, your dog wants a pup cup, your dog FaceTimes you and tells you that they want a pup cup, and you're like, yes, all the time, yes. <laughs> all that you have to do is call Uber for dogs. Uber will come, pick up your dog, put him in the passenger seat of the car, roll the window down, take him to Starbucks, their dog is all happy, they'll get him a pup cup, take them back home, lock the door, it's great, you're thousands of miles away, your pup is happy, they're gonna be glad to see you when you get home, and you're just like, to your imagination, this is literally the best idea I've ever heard, ever. 
Like, I'm writing down every single detail. What do you think it would be called? And they're like, woofer, obviously. And you're like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, and what else? Like, wh what other ideas do you have on this? And your imagination's like, well, I was actually thinking, now that you asked, you know, I'm glad you like it. I was thinking we actually put like a little leash around them, and then there's a button on the leash that they can press for themselves whenever they want to puff up, and then Uber will come pick them up, and you're like, oh, yeah, totally, totally. This is awesome. Your imagination, if you treat your imagination like that, I promise you, your imagination will be back hundreds of times per day. That's like not even an exaggeration, bringing you ideas. If you treat your imagination with that extreme validation that we talked about, your imagination will be back all the time. You've gotta have a post-it note ready for them. You know, when they show up at your office, you've gotta be like, okay, I'm listening. Like, what, what's your idea, you know? Write it down on the post-it note, brilliant. I've gotta get back to work, that is awesome. You know, the only thing you can give your imagination is extreme validation. Twice in one presentation. <laughs> Lack of validation is going to absolutely kill your imagination. They're not going to. They're not going to tell you anything. If you don't like their ideas, they're done. Like they, they have their feelings hurt, and they're like, ah. Even when they have an idea that's better than Uber for dogs, which is a stretch, but even when they do they're not gonna tell it to you, because they're gonna be like, he never liked my ideas, you know? So you gotta have that relationship with your imagination where you love everything they tell you, because that's when they'll bring you all of the ideas. The Uber for dogs, and also the Uber for people, which was his actually Nick's idea, and that's the one that might actually work. Your imagination wants to tell you everything, so trust it, let it give you everything, and don't starve it out, you know? Don't create a famine. That's rule number two, no editing allowed. Now we'll go on to rule number three. Rule number three is push things past space. So when you have an idea, you need to take that idea, and the next thing you do is ask, what if? So push things past space. So you have this idea, and you say, OK, I like that. What if, in addition to that, this happened? Right? And then after you take that and you have the new idea, right? So Let's, let's take like a weather app, for example. Your imagination comes to you and they say, oh, I want to build a weather app. And you're like, yes, I love it. That's just, yes. And then you ask, what if? Okay, what if? What if the weather app, and remember, there's no rules, rule number one. What if the weather app could actually transport you to the location you were looking at the weather? You know, like if you like want to see the weather in Texas right now, some weird, obscure place, what if the weather app could actually transport you there? Imagination's like, that's awesome. I love that. After you ask what if, ask what if again. What if, your, what if your weather app could not only transport you to the location, but it could actually make you feel like you were in that weather, you know? So when, when it's hot in Texas every single day, you can look at your weather app, you can view the weather in Texas, and you can actually feel like you're like, oh man, that is like, it's hot there, you know? I don't have to just read it, like I can feel it's hot in Texas. After you ask what if again, the next thing you do is ask what if again. And you just keep asking what if and pushing the idea further and further and further. And that's what it means to push things past space. So now that we're talking about space, what better thing to talk about than Star Wars? Let's talk about how they did this in Star Wars. So George Lucas sits down with his imagination, Gerald, and they say, what can we do to make the empire like really scary? And Gerald is like, what if the Empire had this space station that was the size and shape of a planet. George Lucas is like, yes, absolutely, I love that. That is awesome. So then, rule number three, right? Ask what if again. So then they say, okay, how can we push it even farther? Oh man, thinking. Gerald is like, okay, I got it. What if that space station could blow up planets? George Lucas is like, yes, this is awesome. Okay, let's ask what if again, how can we push this even further? How can we push it past space? They say, okay, what if that planet belonged to Leia? It was Leia's home planet. It's like, man, this is like, we've got a franchise on our hands, people. <laughs> Incredible ideas. I was gonna put an app example in here, but for <laughs> sake of time and the fact that I forgot to do it, we're gonna move on. <laughs> <laughs> Rule number three. Push things past space. When you have an idea, keep pushing it. Push it over the edge. See how far you can get it. Keep asking what if. No rules allowed. I know that you can't transport yourself to Texas. It doesn't matter. 
push it. See how far you can get it. You'll figure it out later. Your director self, your engineer self will figure it out. If you're in the meeting with your imagination, none of those things matter. You just gotta keep pushing it. See how far we can get it. Okay, rule number four. Rule number four, like rules number one through three, is probably the most important rule on this list. Rule number four is build what you want to build. Build what you want to build. So let me tell you about another story. This is a guy, his name is John Baldessari. John Baldessari, he's a painter. And he actually went to school for painting. He painted for 20 years. 20 years of his life, he painted hundreds of paintings. And he sold a couple of them, but not very many. He did it all the time. And I uh, kind of got by on it, and it was fine. 20 years of doing this, John Baldessari takes everything that he still had, which was most of his work, and ripped it all up into hundreds of pieces until he had a huge stack of paper, a huge pile of shreds of all of his paintings in shreds. Then he went to the cemetery, symbolically, and burned all of the shreds of paper and canvas and everything, all of the paint melting down, his entire life work up in flames, burning. One year after that, he sat down at his dinner table, he took a bunch of pieces of paper, he took a pen, and he wrote hundreds and hundreds of times, like he was in detention, I will not make any more boring art. I will not make any more boring art, again and again and again and again. He was so sick of creating mediocre content. Art is heart plus soul plus work. Art is a lot of things, but it's not just work. Art takes your entire being to go into it. And as iOS developers, I consider all of us in this room artists. You know, it's more than just being an engineer, it's being an artist. It's putting your soul and your heart into something that you're creating. Creating something that you're really proud of, that you're not gonna wanna burn in 20 years from now but something that'll stand and it's a beautiful piece of work. Lots of amazing artists, right? This, over 200,000 dots in this painting to create this painting and over two years of work. Incredible animation, if you've seen Into the Spider-Verse, just incredible work. Really a piece of art that's gonna stand. Incredible engineering, you know, these rockets that can go up into space and land themselves. Just, it's a piece of art. It's more than just work, it's a piece of art. Incredible development. You know, staying up all night, putting animations into your app, creating graphics that are beautiful and engaging. This is art, so much more than just engineering, it's artwork. So I want you to write down in your notes right now, I know I wouldn't say anything to write down, but this is the one thing, I commit to creating something beautiful. It's something so much more than just lines of code, It's something that you really love, something that you're passionate about, you know, something that's gonna be a piece of art. So going back to John Baldessari from before, he ended up being like an amazing artist. He has some incredible paintings. This is what he said. He said, I saw, if I saw the art around me that I liked, then I wouldn't do art. So look around you, what's not there? Build what you wish existed on the App Store. There is no weather app that transports you to Texas. Why not? You ever wondered that? Why does that not exist? Build what you wish existed. Work with your imagination and build something that is incredible, something that you're proud of, something that you wanted to build. That's rule number four. Okay, now we're gonna go through a bonus. These are excerpts from Creativity Rules numbers five through 2196. Just a few selections that I wanted to include in here. Rule number five, <laughs> write down everything, all right? So hopefully that's what you've been doing during this meeting, but writing down every idea that comes to you. This is where your imagination is gonna really feel validated, right? If everything that they tell to you, you put it down on a piece of paper, they're gonna feel like, man, he's taking what I'm saying seriously. What if every time you went to your parents and you told them a story or a problem you had, they're like taking notes and they're like dying, <laughs> you'd be like, wow, they really <laughs> are into this. <laughs> Think about that with your imagination. What if every time your imagination comes to you, you're instantly writing things down? I've got post-it notes on my desk, I've got post-it notes beside my bed, 
just so that whenever an idea comes, I'm ready to, to put it down, so that my imagination knows that I'm uh, taking him seriously. And then he'll bring me all kinds of ideas, right? Most of the ideas you don't use, of course, in, in multiple lifetimes. But let your imagination give you all of their ideas, and some of them are going to be really, really terrific. Rule number 67, work in a creative space. Have somewhere where you can focus, where you can really get into the imaginative space. This doesn't have to be like a big area. Uh, it can literally be, you know, sitting up in your bed with your laptop, headphones on. But like have a space where you can be alone and imagine without being interrupted. These conversations with your imagination, super important. If they're interrupted, your imagination will start to feel like, man, he's a busy guy, you know, or busy woman. Not really going to share ideas. It seems like they already have enough going on. You really got to treat them with utmost respect. So have a place where you can focus, where you can think, have these meetings with your imagination friend, and uh, just talk. Rule number 43, this is an important one. Listen to good music. If you have music that inspires you, that pushes you, that makes you want to do something, listen to it. The song All Star from Shrek. Awesome song, actually. Who knew? Whenever I listen to that, I'm like, yeah, I'm an all-star. I'm a rock star. Let's get this going. Like, gets me excited to build something cool. So have music that inspires you. You know, put together a playlist of songs that you hear on Apple ads, songs that you hear, you know, on your For You playlist, anywhere. If you like them, put them into a playlist, and you can listen to them again later to pull up those uh, creative thoughts that you had. And it could literally be any song. There's no limit to what that could be. Rule number six. Take time to talk to your imaginary friend. Uh, this is an extremely important one. Go on walks with your imaginary friend, right? And this means that not bringing other people with you, as much as you like other people, you gotta treat your imaginary friend like a person. So go on walks with them. Uh, my mentor would take rides uh, by himself in the car. He'd go on long uh, road trips by himself and his wife would drive behind him. <laughs> and so I asked him, I said, why don't you guys just drive together? And she said, oh, he likes to drive by himself. And I was like, why? She said, well, the conversation is so good. <laughs> she was actually being serious. You know, you'll pull up next to him in the car, and he's just talking. You're like looking around. Nobody else is in the car. And he doesn't have a phone in there. So <laughs> take drives with your imagination friend and just talk. Take time to talk to him. And of course, the most important rule is there are no rules. So do something great, right? This was the original purpose we got in here. Do something that you're proud of. Build something unexpected. Christopher Nolan said, unexpected and exciting. You know, what is the best thing for the app, regardless of what's possible, regardless of where you're currently at, regardless of what's already been done? Rules aside, build something incredible, and then push it past space. When you have the idea, how can you push it farther? You know, not only can this space station blow up a planet, it can blow up Leia's home planet. A lot more important, right? A lot more interesting. So good luck with your imagination, friend, relationship. It's an extremely important one. And uh, thanks for taking time today. Thank you. to not uh, put rules on the questions. So rather than looking for like, what is the right question in this situation, even take things like, okay, so we can't transport them to Texas, right? If you're talking about it, you wanna find a creative solution. Okay, so we can't, knowing this, that we can't take them to Texas, but what can we do? You know, can we make the user feel like they're in Texas? Can we use audio cues? Can we use animations? Can we get pictures from there? 
So I think even when you think something is not a creative solution because it's not gonna work to the problem, uh, maybe being framed in a different way it could be, right? So I don't know if that completely answers your question, but I think keeping the rules off of it and then wondering, okay, how could we interpret that idea in a different way could be helpful. Yeah. How do you work through a creative block? Oh yeah. Man, that's a, that's a good question. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, just, uh, yeah, like two months ago, or a few months ago now, but it was like a time when I was like, man, I'm so done, I couldn't think of anything. I think like for me what worked was giving myself time to, oh, like, to just not worry about it for a minute. So like you can ask my wife, I literally took two months off of not my job because I have to make money, but like my, <laughs> si my side business that I work on at night, I didn't worry about it for a couple months. And I was worried like, oh man, it's so much valuable time that I should be building and focusing on this. But uh, in the end, it's been way more valuable to take a break, uh, still listening to Ollie because Ollie was still giving me ideas, right? Uh, and But to take a break from the actual application of it because that starting to get burnt out is a problem. And I think noticing it before it actually happens too, like burnout is kind of like this slope <clears throat> and then you hit it and once you hit it, it's a lot harder to get out of that, off that cliff than it is to stop going up the hill. But uh, I think maybe taking a break could be helpful there, but still listening though, yeah. Cool, Any other, anyone else or? Yeah. Okay, do you, what's with your enthusiasm? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Visit my uh, site online. It's like 1999, I think is so. So yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs>